Hello and welcome back everyone. So today in this lecture we will be looking into the parts of a removable partial denture. So the removable partial denture has in total 8 different parts named as the major connectors, the minor connectors, the rests, the direct retainers, the stabilizing components, the indirect retainers, the denture base and the artificial teeth. So each of these parts has a specific function to perform and we will be briefly going through them. So the first part is the major connector. Now a removable partial denture should ideally extend to both sides of the arc to give it a more stable design and the component that connects the two main parts of the denture is known as the major connector. So a major connector basically performs the role of connecting both sides of the prosthesis and while doing that it essentially transfers the functional forces that are being applied on the artificial teeth as well as on the denture base thereby distributing the forces of mastication equally along the entire arc and all of this essentially provides an optimum stability to the prosthesis. Now there are many different types of major connectors that I will be discussing in my some other video but the basic principle remains the same. Now the next part is the minor connector. So the minor connector are also like major connectors connecting different parts of the prosthesis but their role is essentially to connect the smaller parts like the clasp assembly, the indirect retainers or the occlusal rests to the major connector. And by providing these connections it also essentially helps in distribution of the applied functional forces and thereby stabilizing the prosthesis and transferring the stress evenly across the different parts of the prosthesis. So that's the reason why there are so many minor characters present on a single denture. So the third part is the rests. So the rest is basically a part of the prosthesis that is placed on a tooth surface and provides the vertical support to the denture. And by providing this vertical support, it maintains the components of the prosthesis in their plane positions. Other than this, the rest also maintain established occlusal relationship and they also direct and distribute the occlusal loads to the abundant teeth. The rest also make up the indirect retainer which will be discussed further. So moving on, we have the direct retainers. So a direct retainer by definition is that part of the prosthesis that engages an abutment tooth or in some cases it may also engage an implant. So it essentially helps the prosthesis to resist its displacement away from the tooth or the tissues. So the direct retainers can either be a part of the clasp assembly along with other components of the clasp assembly or it can either be in the form of an attachment. So the next part is the stabilizing component or the reciprocal component. So as the name indicates, these are essentially present to stabilize the prosthesis and help the retainer arm. And for doing that, the reciprocating component essentially provides reciprocation and counteracts the lateral forces of the retentive arm that the retentive arm applies to the abundant tooth. So the next are the indirect retainers. Now indirect retainer is not a specific component, it is rather a group of different components. So the importance of indirect retainer lies when making a denture with distal extensions. Like the denture of Kennedy's class 1 and class 2 have distal extensions. Because they both have posterior edentulous area. So in these cases where the denture has a distal extension, there exists a very high chance of dislodgement simply because it is supported only on one side by the abundant teeth. And these distal extensions tend to dislodge and rotate the denture around the fulcrum line. So the fulcrum line is essentially the line or the axis around which the denture tends to rotate when the denture is being subjected to forces that are directed away from the ridge. So in cases like these, the use of indirect retainers becomes very important as to avoid the dislodgement of denture. So an indirect retainer basically consists of one or more occlusal rest and supporting minor connectors. Also when placing an indirect retainer, one thing we need to keep in mind is that the indirect retainer should always be placed opposite to the fulcrum line as far away from the distal extension base as possible. So theoretically the best place for the indirect retainer would be in the close vicinity of the incisor tooth but they may not be as strong enough to support the components of the indirect retainer. Therefore in such situations, the nearest canine tooth 
or the mesial surface of the first molar may be used despite them being closer to the fulcrum line. So if possible, two indirect retainers should be used to compensate for the compromised distance. So the next component is the denture base. So the denture base essentially supports the artificial teeth and holds them in their place. It also receives the occlusal forces and transfers these forces to the supporting oral structures. Other than this, it also has an aesthetic function by providing a more natural looking look to the wearer. It also works as a stimulator to the underlying tissues, providing stimulation to the oral tissues which thereby maintain their form and tone. And finally, in the end, we have the artificial teeth that are resting on the denture basis. So apart from looking aesthetically pleasing while talking and smiling, these teeth also play a role in transferring the occlusal forces to the denture basis. So this was just a brief and short overview on the different components of a removable partial denture. I hope everything is clear in this video. If you still have any confusions or any questions, please do comment down below and I will try my best to answer them. So please take care of yourselves and I will see you people next time. Goodbye.